today I'm going to be doing a how-to on how to create and utilize a database view in ServiceNow. So you might be wondering what type of scenario would you need to do this for? And pretty common scenario for database views is where you want to report on a specific type of record, but the information relating to that is stored in a separate table. The most common example would be relating metrics to incidents in a report. So in our hypothetical situation, let's say a user tries to report on longest resolve times for incidents. And because they're just a user, they try to do that against the regular incident table. They don't get the results they want. They're confused. So they reach out to you. And because you're the awesome administrator that knows exactly what table you need to hit for that, you go ahead and you create a report for them. So we'll just call this incidents with longest resolve time. And remember, we have not created our database view yet. I need metric instance. That's where that information is stored. There we go. And we go next, we show bars. We're going to group by, from the metric instance records, we're going to group by the incident IDs. We're going to sum our duration. So we've run our basic starter chart from our metric instance table. And one thing to notice is that it's pulled in the incidents and the problem. So let's try to filter this down a little bit, right? Let's say the definition do the dot lock field. Table is incident. Okay. And we'll hit the run. So that narrowed it down a little bit. Can we filter this initial chart further by the fields that are on incident? Let's say the user wants incidents from specific assignment groups. Well, because this is a document ID type field that's pointing at the incidents, we're not able to really dot walk back into the incidents and to filter that way. So now we're starting to hit the limits of the information that we can extract from just one table. And we need to look at doing some type of SQL join statement in order to bring multiple records together and get more robust reporting. Let's go ahead and look in our database views. Now, if you're a real superstar administrator, you already know that there is an incident metric database view already created out of the box. And of course you would just utilize that for your report. But since this is a training exercise, I'm just gonna delete this and recreate it and then let that serve as our example. So let's see here, delete. And we will create a new one. Okay, so now that we've created our top level view, which is kind of like a virtualized database table, we're going to bring in the tables that make up the view. So the first one will be our metric definition table. We need to put a prefix, a variable prefix on our view tables so that when we try to reference a database field from a script, We'll add the prefix to it so that the system knows exactly which view it's supposed to pull from to get that information. Because let's say the tables you're pulling together, if they have the same name on different tables, that becomes confusing for the system. So that's what the variable prefix is for. So since this is metric definition, we'll call that MD. And the where clause is basically a SQL join. So where the metric definition underscore table field equals incident. So notice I added my prefix inside the where clause so that it will know exactly what field it's supposed to pull from, the one from the metric definition table. And now I'm just gonna repeat this process with the metric instance table. I will give that a variable prefix. I will specify the order because these things have to run in order. And my where clause will be metric instance underscore definition equal to metric definition underscore sys ID. 
And now we're going to bring in the incident table. Assign it a variable prefix, specify the order, specify our join clause. Metric instance underscore ID is equal to incident underscore sys ID. And now that we have created our database view, let's run our report against our database view. Incidents with longest resolve time. Source table, incident metric. And we can see now that we have our incident fields being pulled in since we have them joined through our where clauses. Going to aggregate the sum on the duration field. And we have our more robust filtering now. Let's see here, we could filter by assignment group if we wanted, if our incidents have that information available. So basically that's a scenario where you want to use a database view is when you want to pull in data from multiple tables into your reporting solutions. You can also use a database view in a backend script. Just be sure that when you use glide record against your database view, you also use your variable prefixes that we talked about before your column names so that the system knows which view table to pull those from. And hopefully you found this information useful and thank you for watching.